Hey, Online Church family, we are so glad that you are joining us today as we continue our series called The Life You Always Wanted and learn how to experience self-control in our lives. Welcome to Pathway Church. I'm Jared Piney, your online pastor, and today I'm joined by my good friend and your online host, Marikas Brown. Yes, and welcome, Pathway family. We want to encourage you to share this service right now so others can join you to hear an impactful message. You can copy the link and text it to a friend, or if you're on Facebook, just click the share button. We love getting to know you better in the chat. Answer this question, which would you rather enjoy, homemade ice cream or s'mores? Let us know in the chat while you're doing that. Jared, how about you, man? Come on, Marikas, man, I want both of those. Like, how can I choose between that? Um, if I had to choose, I'd say some homemade ice cream, but okay. got to throw in like some Reese's toppings or Butterfinger or something like that. But that sounds both good. solid choices. What about you? I would say for me, definitely if it's ice cream, it's either adding toppings, uh -huh. cake or ice or, or maybe pie. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I think I probably would choose s'mores. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes with s'mores, of course, it's like a cool day or something like that. So sometimes it fits an occasion. So I probably would go with s'mores, man. Okay, man. I, th I think you're wrong on this, but how about you guys <laughs> settle this debate? So let us know ice cream or s'mores online. Well, if this is your first time with us, then welcome. We certainly hope this is your first time of many times. And if you are new, then you're at the right place. No matter where you are in your faith, this is a great place to connect with Jesus and other people. Feel free to type that you are new in the chat so our people can say hi and welcome you. And if you're new to Pathway, then let us give you a coffee from Starbucks. Just text the word new to 316-444-4180 and we will send you a digital gift card that you can use on your next trip to Starbucks. And when we say new, we mean that this could be your very first time watching or it may mean that you've been watching for the last several weeks or even months, but our online team hasn't had a chance to meet you. We would love to get to meet you, and that starts by you texting the word NEW to the number on the screen below. And we want to continue to partner with you as a parent or guardian to help your children grow in their faith. One tool that will help equip you is called the Parent Q app. The goal of the Parent Q app is to equip you with what you need so that you can be the parent that you desire to be. Yeah, and simply put, it's an app on your phone that gives you age-specific information so that your kids, it'll help them grow in their faith. It makes parenting easier, and we all need that. All you have to do is go to the link below to find out more. When you download the app, search for Pathway Church to help you get the right information for your kids.
As we come to our generosity moment, there are many different ways to give to God here at Pathway. Here is a question. How many of you have one of these? Probably 99% of you watching right now. Yeah, so I want everyone to take out their smartphones right now, wherever you're watching. So next question is, how many of you have the Pathway Church app downloaded? You see, there are a lot of great features on the app. You can watch the live stream on it. You can follow along with the message notes, or you can give to God through Pathway Church. And giving on the app is one of the easiest and most secure ways to give. You can give by an electronic check or with a debit card. You can schedule gifts, review your giving, and update your contact information at any time, day or night. Yeah, your gifts become a part of God's plan to resource the local church to do His work here on earth. We are so thankful for you as you partner with us and you join in on what God is doing in our community and around the world. Thank you. This week while you give, be praying that God will grow your trust and faith in Him and that He will multiply our gifts that we give and they will impact many lives. Get ready for a message from our lead pastor, Todd Carter, as we continue our series, The Life You Always Wanted, and learn about how to experience self-control in our lives. Feel free to open up your Pathway Church app and on the weekly guide, click the message notes to follow along. Welcome Pathway family at all of our locations. Those of you who are watching online, I am so glad that you are here for this final weekend of our series, The Life You've Always Wanted. And last weekend, I got a wonderful picture and reminder of what this kind of life looks like. Last weekend, our oldest son, Jake, got married to his beautiful wife, Kristen, and it was awesome. And one of the things that was most rich about that experience was seeing how both of them had been so self-disciplined to be able to find a spouse who was passionate about Christ following. And because they waited patiently for Christ following, uh, a Christ following spouse and were self-controlled to honor God with the purity of their relationship, they experienced an incredible truckload of blessing. And it was just unbelievable. They were experiencing the life they always wanted. And, and so today I wanted to focus in on that fruit of the Spirit, on the fruit of the Spirit uh, of self-control. 
But before we jump into our content today, I wanted to go back and review where we have been uh, over the last several weeks of our series, and, and specifically what we've learned about how we can lean into God's Spirit so that we can experience more of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Because the problem is many times when we've talked about the fruit of the Spirit or things like uh, this, we've kind of inadvertently, we've sent the wrong message. And, and the message that we've sent inadvertently is try harder. We just want you to try harder, grow more fruit, be more loving, be more joyful, be more peaceful, just try harder. And so we say, you know, we want you to do these good things and we don't want you to do these bad things. And as a result, many times what happens is we come to church and we feel guiltier and guiltier because we keep trying harder to be able to do the good things and trying harder not to do the bad things, but it seems like we just keep failing. But the good news is in the book of Galatians, and particularly in chapter 5, verse 16, Paul gives us the answer to not falling into this kind of trap. He says there, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not want to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So you see, the way we are to grow the fruit of the Spirit in our lives is not by trying harder, rather it's by the power of God's Spirit. So, so the big question then is, how do we do that? How do we live by the power of God's Spirit? Well, let's go back quickly kind of and review some of those key principles that we've talked about in regard that, to how that we are to live by the power of God's Spirit. And the first principle that we talked about is it's about we, not me. The way we grow the fruit of God's Spirit best in our lives is in the context of God's family. The way that we really kind of catch the wind uh, of the power of God's Spirit is when we are with uh, other people in community. Uh, Paul specifically says in, in Romans chapter 1, he says there, I want us to help each other with the faith we have. Your faith will help me and my faith will help you. So remember the, the story that Rodney told about when his brother Ryan passed away. He and his family experienced peace in the midst of extreme difficulty because they were together. You see, it was in the context of community. You see, the Spirit of God is thickest when we're in the context of his family. When we're with brothers and sisters in Christ, there's just this supernatural wind and presence of the Holy Spirit that creates this space where we can grow the fruit of our, the Spirit in our lives and experience him. In many ways, it's kind of like the difference between doing personal training and going to a team practice. Something unique happens in a team as opposed to training individually. And something supernaturally happens uniquely in us when we come together. It creates this environment where we can experience God and this environment where the fruit of the Spirit can really be grown in our lives. You see, it's in the we and not just the me. And, and, and then second, it's about striding, not striving. In Galatians chapter 5, Paul talks about it this way. He says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So we've discovered if we want more of this kind of life, more of the fruit of God's Spirit in our lives, it's about keeping in step with the Spirit of God. And when Paul says keep in step with the Spirit, it's a picture. It's a picture of, of taking a long walk with another person and keeping in stride with them step by step. It's constant. It's continual. It's being in this continual awareness of the presence of God. And allowing him then to direct our lives and allowing him to reveal sin in our lives so that we can then confess those sins and then be able to turn away from them. So, for example, the moment maybe a lustful thought enters uh, our minds, or the, the moment a selfish spirit sets in, 
or the moment that we start to lose self-control, we confess that sin. And then we make a conscious decision to be able to follow what God wants us to do. You see, it's about striding step by step with God and not striving, okay? And then third, it's about training, not trying. Remember what Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4? Train yourself for godliness. And so a key principle to allowing the fruit of God's Spirit to thrive in our lives is by training and not just keeping to trying harder. And and that's why we talked about the spiritual disciplines or the spiritual exercises that we can do. Spiritual disciplines or spiritual exercises, they help train us. They train our bodies, our lives, our minds, our hearts to be able to grow the fruits of God's Spirit in our lives. And, And some of those training exercises that we talked about were things like studying and memorizing God's Word, serving other people, confessing our sins, giving, fasting, praying, and really being in in fellowship with other Christ followers. So we've got to get in the spiritual gym, remember? And allow ourselves to be able to be trained by the Holy Spirit. So we don't look like this, but instead we look like this, right? Right, we are strong, shredded up, followers of Jesus, because it's about training, not just trying harder. So as we lean into God's Spirit, He produces then His fruit in our lives. Well, today, the fruit of the Spirit that we want to focus on, like I mentioned, is the fruit of the Spirit of self-control. And I'm sure that part of the reason that self-control is at the end of the list of the fruits of the Spirit is because it takes the gritty resolve of self-control to be able to experience really all the rest of the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. But, But the great thing about this fruit of the Spirit is that we can go once again back to what Paul says in Galatians 5, 16, when he says, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. And so it's interesting, Paul doesn't say here, that we won't struggle with temptations. And he doesn't say here that we're not gonna struggle with things that are gonna derail us from living that life that we've always wanted. But what he does say is that the way we won't succumb to those temptations and those distractions is if we join ourselves hand in hand with the Holy Spirit of God. So it's a choice that we make beforehand. It's a choice we make in advance to walk hand in hand with the Holy Spirit of God. So first, self-control is about before, not after, all right? Because the key way, the the key to practicing really self-control is pre-arranged choices. We, we, We can make our choices beforehand to prepare ourselves for any given situation that we might face. And that's so important because as we do that, It allows the wind of God's Spirit to powerfully blow in our lives and for Him to be able to then grow that fruit of self-control in us. So, for example, let's talk about the physical dimension of our lives. For me, exercise is very important, and my schedule has been kind of out of kilter this week because we were in Kansas City, uh, still on Monday, uh, kind of cleaning up from the wedding. But for the rest of this week... Even though that I would have rather stayed in bed and slept, I I got up early so I could either go lift weights or I could go run. I certainly had several excuses why I was maybe too busy to work out, that I was too tired to work out, but I made a pre-arranged decision that I was going to work out. So I set my alarm, I got my workout stuff ready, and then when the morning came, I was ready to roll. But it, but it was about a pre-arranged choice. Or another area would be the financial area. You know, Chris and I, for example, we try to live by a budget for the most part. And that means if I go to Cabela's and I see a, a new shotgun that I would like to have, I'm able to say no if it's not in our budget. So even if that new shotgun would enable me to maybe shoot more ducks or maybe that it would be on sale, I've already made that decision in advance. 
But, but the key to allowing the wind of God's Spirit here to be able to blow in my life is about making that decision before and not after. And prearranged decisions also work in our relationships. Here's what I'm talking about in this area, specifically for those of you who are Christ followers. A prearranged decision you would make is to only marry someone who is a passionate Christ follower. And if you'll exercise self-control and make a prearranged choice to do that, you'll set yourself up to experience the life you've always wanted. Or if, if you're a married person, a prearranged choice that you might make is to set a regular date night or to have a regular time out with your uh, spouse to be able to spend time with them. And what you'll see is, is that couples who have flourishing marriages, they make prearranged choices. They are self-disciplined, self-controlled to be able to spend quality time together. Or another area where we need to have self-control or make prearranged choices is in the moral area of our lives. For example, the number one desire that men have in, in a broad brush way is sex. So for most men, in some degree, you're going you're gonna to struggle with lust. So men, you, you'll need to make some prearranged choices that, that are going to give you some protection. So for example, you might want to be able to put some protection on your internet browser to protect yourself from porn. And if you've got some uh, guy friends at work that like to go to topless bars, you're going to have to make a prearranged choice not to go with them. And if you'll make those prearranged choices beforehand, those decisions beforehand, you'll protect yourself from moral failures so that you can experience in the end more of this life that you've always wanted. Or, or another struggle area for me uh, that I struggle with in terms of self-control is a lot of times what comes out of my mouth. Or maybe for some of other people that are a little bit more indirect, maybe it's for what you might post on Facebook. But because for me, like I shared a couple of weeks ago, where Chris and I were driving and she couldn't tell me what my next turn was, and so I said, can't you figure it out, Mrs. Master's Degree? Well, that didn't go very well. I didn't have very much self-control in that, in that moment. So now what we try to do is we try to have conversations beforehand. We try to have conversations before we get out on the road to be able to go someplace. So, for example, when we were in Kansas City this last weekend, we made some attempts to be able to stay in front of that same kind of situation. But the key to be able to catch the powerful wind of God's Spirit, to be able to, to do change in our lives in this area of self-control, is to practice advance decision-making. It's about before, remember, not after. Well, the next insight that Paul really gives us in growing our self-control is in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And he says there, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So, so here we can see that self-control is about long-term reward not short-term relief. You know, it reminds me of a wonderful lady here in our church who was uh, tragically killed in a car accident recently. Her name is Deborah Reynolds. And Deborah, her whole life was very passionate about her own two kids, uh, Jeremiah and Kelly, and about other kids as well, helping them. In fact, she was scheduled to be volunteering uh, this last week at our children's day camp. And obviously this is long after her kids have uh, grown and gone. And, and Deborah wasn't just very generous with her time, she was also very generous with her resources. Deborah and her husband Brett have lived modestly really their whole lives. Uh, Deborah a lot of times would be even kind of a little bit embarrassed when she would have her friends over to her house. But what most people didn't know was how incredibly generous Deborah and Brett were to people in need and how incredibly generous they were to the work of God's kingdom. You see, for Deborah, it wasn't about the short-term comforts of this life. Deborah was looking toward eternity. She was about eternity. She was about storing up that long-term treasure in heaven. And that's what she's really, in essence, if she's in heaven now, that's what she is enjoying today. 
And to me, what's so incredible about this whole principle is that it's not just about eternity. It's about today. If you are self-controlled or self-disciplined in the physical domain, you'll have a better self-esteem, you'll have more energy, and you'll be more vibrant and more healthy. If you're self-controlled in the financial domain, you can experience more security, be more generous, and have less stress. You know, and if you're self-controlled in your relationships, especially with your spouse, you'll have better communication, you have more intimacy, and have a good physical and spiritual relationship. But in the end, it's about focusing on the long-term reward and not just whatever short-term relief you might experience. You know, one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time was a passionate Christ follower by the name of John Wooden. And John Wooden won more college basketball championships and more consecutive college basketball games than any other coach in history. And one of the things that he was known for was in the midst of the most tense situations, including national championships games, he was totally uh, unflappable. I mean, he was incredibly calm. In, in an interview, he was asked once, how do you keep your cool in games when UCLA is behind and the officiating is going against you? You never seem to cuss out the players or the referees. You don't throw chairs. You don't abuse or malign guys on your team or other coaches. And Wooden answered quite candidly. He said, well, I have the same emotions as every other coach. But he said, in my pocket, I keep a tiny silver cross. And when I feel myself becoming out of control or getting too intense in a basketball game, I reach in my pocket and I hold on to that cross. And it reminds me that there is something more important than winning basketball games. And the reporter responded, oh, so it's some kind of good luck charm. And John Wooden said, no, not at all. He said, the cross serves as a reminder. It is a reminder to me of what is most important. You see, John Wooden was reminding himself that God and the fruit of the Spirit is better than anything that we can have in this life. It's better than any national championship game. It's better than any possession. It's better and more significant than any accolade that we could ever experience. You see, it's God and the fruit of his spirit. That's where the life that we are looking for, that's what life is all about. That's what moves eternity, brothers and sisters. That's what moves eternity. And so this week, here's what I want you to do. I want to give you kind of an essence, kind of a little self-starter kit just on this fruit of the Spirit that even we're talking about this week. And what I want you to do is, first of all, I want you to start with yourself. I don't want you to think about anybody else. Don't think about anybody else that you think needs self-control. You know, even Jesus said, don't worry about the speck of dust or dirt in your brother's eye when you have indeed a massive plank in your own eye. So what I want you to do is I want you to focus on yourself. Self-control begins with self. And then second, start strategically. I, I, I want you to pick one area that you can grow in self-control in. I mean, maybe it's finances. Maybe it's your diet. Maybe it's what comes out of your mouth or what you post on Facebook. Maybe it's an addictive behavior, or maybe it's your choice of relationships. But strategically, pick one area of self-control that you want a grow, to grow in. And if you're wondering about what area that you should pick, uh, and you don't know what it is, I just encourage you to ask your spouse or a close friend. I'm sure that they would have lots of input for you. But pick a, a strategic area. And then finally... 
start now. I mean, don't say, I'll start dieting tomorrow. Don't say, I'll I'll stop drinking tomorrow or I'll start budgeting tomorrow. No, start now. Because I promise you, if you'll start now, if you'll make choices in advance, and if you'll focus on those long-term results, that long-term reward, the Spirit of God will enable you. He'll enable you to bear the fruit, the the fruit of self-control in your life, and you'll experience what your soul longs for. And what your soul longs for, what you were created for, is that life that you've always wanted and it's found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, today, as we begin to close and we really close out this whole series, we want to take this really last opportunity that we have once again to be able to kind of strengthen our spiritual muscles through prayer. We want to kind of increase that muscle memory so that we'll, in the end, we will grow this fruit of the spirit of self-control in our lives so that it can be seen. So like always, if you're in an in-person service, you're going to be getting a copy of this prayer when you leave today. If you're watching online, you can print it off from one of our social media accounts. But I want to invite you right now and really all this week just to be able to pray this prayer. So let's do this. Let's pray this prayer out loud together right now. Gracious God, thank you for your endless well of forgiveness. May we be so rooted in you that we are not governed by our impulses. Remind us that it is not perfection you desire. Your love is not conditional on our actions. Help us to have patience and grace for ourselves as we grow. We pray that our capacity for self-control increases as we surrender to you. May we love those around us well as they walk the same challenging path. You are good even when we fall short. Oh, Father in heaven, we just thank you so much for the gift of your spirit. The gift of your spirit that fills us, that enables us and gives us power not to respond just to whatever impulse that we might have. But God, thank you for the power that you give us. And God, I pray that you just would give us wisdom, Lord, to be able to make pre-arranged choices, choices in advance. And that in the end, Lord, that we would focus on the reward, God, that you have for us. Not only uh, in this life, God, but in the life to come. God, we love you and we thank you. Now, as we continue to pray, really right now, I know there's others of you today who've never experienced, really for the very first time, this life that you've always wanted. And I want to let you know that you'll never experience that life, that life that your soul longs for until you make Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life. You know, Jesus said when he came into this world that he wanted us to have life and have it abundantly. And so today, don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity right now. Right now to be able to make Jesus Christ the leader, the savior of your life. So I just want to invite you right now Pray this prayer with me. Oh, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, that I've made mistakes. But today, Jesus, I let go of what's been holding me back, and I take hold of you. I make you the leader and the Savior of my life. Thank you, Jesus for dying on that cross for my sins. And now use my life, Jesus, to be able to go and offer your hope and your love to other people. Now with everybody's head still bowed right now and eyes still closed, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time and you made Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life, man, I just want you to let him know. What I wanna invite you to do is I want you to raise your hand real high 
real high wherever that you're watching right now. I want you to raise it real high just to be able to say to God that you are all in, that you're a part of his family right now. If you're watching online, you can click that link that's in the chat, but raise your hand real high. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is always at work. He's always at work. Let me pray for you right now. Oh, Father in heaven, I just thank you today. I thank you today for my brothers and sisters who've surrendered their life to you. God, I just pray that you just would fill them with your peace, God. I pray that you fill them with your joy, uh, God, your love. God, just all the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, they would just feel your presence. And God, I pray that you would use them. You would use them now as they go, Lord, to be able to be your light and your love to other people. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. What a great message and a reminder that self-control and the other fruits of the Spirit, like joy and peace, they cannot be attained by us trying harder. They can only be obtained by the Spirit as we put more and more faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Well, I believe that someone watching this right now knows that they need to take a step in following Jesus. You know that you need someone to come alongside you to encourage you to nudge you, and to walk alongside you. And if that's you, then just go to the website below and sign up for Starting Point. In Starting Point, you will hear about what it's like to follow Jesus, as well as understanding that you are not alone in your faith journey. You know, one of the most important things in my faith journey has been people walking with me and helping me grow in my relationship with Jesus, and I want that for you as well. If this is something that you're interested in, just go to the web link below to find out more and to register. You can join an in-person experience at one of our campuses, or you can sign up for an online experience as well, and we'll get a chance to follow up with you. Well, if you are new to Pathway Church, whether this is your first time watching, or you've been with us for the last several weeks, but we haven't had the opportunity to meet you, then remember to text the word NEW to 316-444-4180 so that we can welcome you to Pathway and send you a digital gift card to Starbucks. Well, my oldest daughter, Emerson, she's six years old, and this last week she went to Pathway Church's elementary camp called Day Camp. I picked her up last Tuesday, and she just told me how amazing it was to swim and sing and play games and learn about God. She then told me how she wanted to raise money for the girls that needed help through the big summer give. Then, get this, she started to talk about all of the friends and our neighbors that she wanted to invite to church because they needed to feel like she does when she's at church. You know, as a dad, that just makes my heart leap for joy, but it got me thinking about us. You know, adults like us, that sometimes we need to have that childlike faith and that childlike eagerness to be obedient to God and to know that we need to invite everyone we know to church who needs to hear the experience of what they can experience through following Jesus Christ. We need to believe that God is one step away and that he will give us opportunities to tell our friends, family members, coworkers, and neighbors about how God is working in us and through us. This week, I want to encourage you to pray each morning that God would give you an invite opportunity and then lean in on that opportunity when he gives it to you. Well, next week, we begin a brand new series called Get Better. This would be a great weekend to invite someone to watch with you. As we get ready to worship God through two more songs, I want us to focus on how we are called to remain in Jesus every day, and through our relationship with him, we will bear fruit. Jesus says this in John 15, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. During these next two songs, allow yourself to connect with God. Here we go. I searched the world, but it couldn't fail me. Man's empty praise. Treasures have faith, I 
never enough when you came along put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh this
You. 